morning. Uh, Michael, thank you so much for your invitation. Kuzu, for your uh, analysis and long-standing friendship, one of the great academic experts on the issue of anti-Semitism. I have been accused of many things in my life, but I'm not an academic, so it's always good to be sitting next to someone who has the impeccable uh, credentials. I would like to, uh, last night I was sitting with one of your colleagues, and I was asked whether we selected this date because of the 80th anniversary of Adolf Hitler coming to power. And I guess if I had been clever, I would have said, of course, but the answer is not at all. Uh, it uh, fits into the schedule, but I, in watching the uh, generally healthy and important debate that has ensued in the last few weeks, uh, I felt it was important to come to uh, Germany and to uh, meet the members of the media uh, through you, the people of Germany, especially younger generations directly, and give an opportunity for any questions uh, that you might have. Uh, I also want to express my general appreciation uh, for the German media's uh, interest, although there have been a few um, uh, interactions that I found uh, less than uh, satisfactory, but that's the way it works in a democracy. And so, um, while I, we did not time this press conference, I think uh, also as a Jew, and someone who carries the name of Simon Wiesenthal, it is important for me to uh, say that uh, 80 years is a long time. Germany today is not the Germany of 1933. Uh, the Simon Wiesenthal Center has an ongoing relationship uh, with uh, many people here in Germany. My last visit here was in the summer, uh, dealing with the issue of uh, the uh, debate over circumcision. We met with the uh, Justice Minister. Uh, we had uh, access to the debate. Uh, the felt uh, gave us uh, space for an op-ed. Uh, we are very, very uh, acutely aware, and, and um, I would say uh, reassured that Germany today uh, is a uh, strong democracy. Uh, you have multi-layered uh, press and uh, media. And um, we, of course, Jews and Germans, our collective history will always be intertwined. And that's uh, part of the reason why we um, are here today. So I want to express first my gratitude for the opportunity to be here and uh, to also uh, commit to try to be available to answer any and all questions. Um, I want to also express my uh, gratitude on behalf of the Wiesenthal Center to Chancellor Merkel for uh, confronting the Egyptian President Morsi on his anti-Semitism, the anti-Semitism of the Muslim Brotherhood uh, yesterday uh, at their meeting. Uh, for those of you who look at our top ten list, uh, Mr. Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood in fact are number one. It's been, uh, despite the fact that the Muslim Brotherhood is pretty proud and open in its uh, Jew hatred, uh, it's been an uphill battle in getting um, uh, important international leaders to actually recognize and respond to this issue. It's been, uh, until uh, just about 10 days ago, nearly impossible to get any of the American media to focus on it until eventually it was a front page New York Times article. So now, we do have uh, the White House, the US State Department, and now the Chancellor of Germany uh, speaking directly to the issue of this hatred that went from the uh, outside in, uh, in Egypt to the inside of the, right now, for now, those who are running the ship uh, of uh, our state. And Mr. Morrissey, frankly, has 14 billion reasons to modify uh, his statements and his actions between the United States, Germany, the EU, and the World Bank. I think he's looking for about 14 plus billion euros in bailout for the Egyptian economy, which any rational person would want to see happen because we don't need an Egypt that's going to implode. On the other hand, we cannot stand by when uh, our country, the most important Arab country on the planet, uh, would see the kinds of uh, hatred, characterization of Jews as apes and pigs, uh, 
well, this week alone, one of the top leaders of, uh, of uh, the Muslim Brotherhood was involved, again, in Holocaust denial. Uh, this kind of hatred cannot go unanswered, and so I want to first of all express our gratitude to Chancellor Merkel for uh, taking it on, and I hope that will send a signal not only to the people who are running uh, Egypt, but also to uh, other leaders here uh, in, uh, uh, in Europe who uh, generally you know, uh, show up to the uh, important uh, commemorations for uh, remembering the dead victims of the Holocaust, but are unfortunately usually all too absent in standing up for the uh, rights and respect of live Jews. Um, a word or two, and I'm trying to, to uh, make some comments on the assumption that everyone here knows the basics, not to go through the whole, but some basic comments that reflect many of the questions that uh, come through. Um, the Wiesenthal Center has various ways in which we try to deal with the issue of the phenomenon of anti-Semitism, uh, and it's uh, always morphing uh, manifestations. Um, we have very close relations with uh, German authorities on the issue of digital terrorism and hate. We've run conferences here. Uh, I'm uh, in regular contact with the people who monitor uh, hate crimes. I was just in, uh, uh, in uh, Paris the last two days. Also, the internet today is the front line of uh, the fight against uh, terrorism. It's also the front line for terrorists to recruit and spread their propaganda. And so we come out with an annual CD-ROM called Digital Terrorism and Hate. March 13th will be the 2013 release. Uh, that is uh, something that will probably be in the vicinity of 18,000 separate websites, Facebook pages, and this year, at the top of the heap, would be, of course, uh, Twitter, which is a huge uh, problem internationally. But that's probably for a different uh, press conference. The top 10. The top 10 uh, anti-Semitic and anti-Israel slurs are meant not to be a scientific study, but to provide for our members and for the public, a snapshot at the end of a calendar year as to where we see uh, some of the uh, most deeply concerning uh, manifestations of anti-Semitism, uh, if you will, in real time. And again, in this case, uh, uh, I think about half of the list this year, unfortunately, deals not just with personalities, but with parties that are either running a country, i.e. Uh, Egypt and Iran, with autocracy and their serial Jew hatred, uh, with um, uh, political parties in places like the Ukraine, Hungary, uh, and Greece, that uh, leverage and celebrate their Jew hatred as part of their political program, and uh, gaining more and more traction in the mainstream, deeply uh, disconcerting to us. Now, um, I was one of the spokesmen for the Jewish organizations at the United Nations World Conference Against Racism in Durban, South Africa in 2001, uh, now understood uh, to be the worst public display of anti-Semitism since the end of World War II. Uh, it was a time of, uh, unfortunately, physical intimidation against uh, the Jewish uh, groups there, including myself. It was a time where uh, ideas as Israel is a new apartheid state was memorialized, and the script that we are fighting uh, in terms of the demonization of, uh, of Israel uh, was really uh, first brought forth in a very, uh, in a very important international forum. By the way, there were 3,900 NGOs at that event, six. Six of the 3,900 stood up in defense for the Jewish NGOs. All six were German. Some of the big boys in the bloc were absent without leave or maybe um, enjoying uh, the spectacle. Um, from the, uh, that event and similar manifestations since, um, some of the most important uh, and respected uh, Jewish personalities, Jewish human rights campaigners. I would identify 
uh, Natan Sharansky, uh, Alan Dershowitz, uh, Erwin Kotler, the former Justice Minister in Canada. Uh, many of us have uh, been grappling since that day of where do you draw the line between legitimate criticism of Israel, uh, and there's plenty of room for that, just ask any Israeli any morning they get up, read any Israeli paper, go to any website, the issue of criticizing Israeli policies has never uh, been uh, the basis for which one would be considered exclusively on that basis to, uh, to be an anti-Semitic. So where do we draw the lines? And I think that Natan Sharansky, who uh, started, as you know, uh, as uh, someone who was very close to the late Dr. Andrei Sakharov in the Soviet Union, here we are in Berlin, I've been to the city often enough, many of you weren't even born back then. But if someone would have told me uh, that someday Check Checkpoint Charlie would be in a museum and the Berlin Wall would be gone, and we'd be living in a world where uh, new uh, Jewish schools are open in Moscow and Chief Rabbi of France is telling people not to wear yarmulkes in the streets of Paris, I would have told them, you know, the Soviets and back then had psychiatric institutes. Maybe you want to check yourself in. So here we are in a, in a, uh, a post-Soviet world. We owe Dr. Sakharov and others whose names we do know and millions of others will never know. Well, bring down the Soviet Union without firing a shot. So Natan Sharansky started his uh, career as a campaigner for uh, democracy and human rights in the Soviet Union, almost paid for his life being in the Gulag, became a refusenik, obviously, thank God, survived, was exchanged, and, uh, and now he's a, uh, an important figure in Israel. He was in various governments, now he's the head of the Jewish agency. And you know what? He boiled it down for simple folks like me. Three Ds. Double standard, demonization, and delegitimization. If you want a snapshot of what I look at every day, and as we look at the incredible amount of information pouring in from all over the world, that is the basis that we uh, approach, uh, not just the top 10, but on a daily basis, how do we filter out and how do we deal uh, with this issue. There is today a worldwide campaign uh, to not uh, merely attack the policies of Israel, but to the attack the idea of Israel. In the academic circles, uh, Israel was a, uh, uh, a guilt trip of colonial powers, a mistake, a historic mistake that needs to be corrected. The Palestine Kairos document inspires uh, certain members of the clergy, Christian clergy, to now uh, characterize Christian support of uh, Israel as a sin, as a moral sin. So in the theological domain, the BDS uh, campaigns against Israel, we're, we're not talking uh, only about criticizing the policies of Israel, but criticizing the legitimacy of, a, of its, its uh, existence. <clears throat> and uh, someone much brighter than me once said, we are and I think this is especially true for rabbis and journalists. We're all entitled to our opinions, but we're not entitled to our own set of facts. Now, when I was asked by a correspondent of the Deutsche Press a few weeks ago whether or not uh, Jacob Augustine was an anti-Semite, I told the reporter, ask him, because as she pointed out, our list is about anti-Semitic slurs, not necessarily about the individual. I was rather surprised to learn that after that long conversation, Deutsche Press ran a story that we were backing off our criticism of Mr. Augstein because we refused to label him at that point an anti-Semite. What we did say is we urged Mr. Augstein to look at his own words and to apologize. Not to us, the Simon Wiesenthal Center is not the Jewish thought police, but to his German readers and uh, to world Jewry. Um, you've heard from Mark Kunzel the analysis, and I think, unfortunately, but it's not any question that based on his own behavior and words, since the release of this list, we can say, yes, we're dealing with an anti-Semite. Um, I want to close my, my formal comment 
by focusing on one specific uh, area that Mr. Augstein spoke about, because also, as far as I know, there's been relatively little discussion about it here in Germany, and if it has been, I apologize, but I haven't seen very much of it. Um, we'll, I'm sure, talk about the uh, issue of uh, whose nuclear bomb is more threatening in the moment. But what I find uh, particularly uh, grotesque and insulting <laughs> and unacceptable is Mr. Augstein to identify 10% of the Israeli population, people he called Haredi Jews, and to characterize them, affect pretty much put them in the same camp as Islamist extremists, in which he says this community is motivated by the law of revenge. If you read what this man says about Haredi Jews, uh, this is classic Jew hatred. This has nothing to do with the Middle East, of which I understand from his public comments. He has no intention of ever visiting Israel, no interest apparently, and no intention. Um, again, someone's entitled to his own opinions, but not his own set of facts. Uh, about Haredi Jews, it is true I am a rabbi, but I can reassure you that this Shabbat, when I will be at the Western Wall, if I show up in a blue shirt, which is likely, I will, for some of the Haredi Jews at the Western Wall, well, they're not really sure how Jewish I would be. And certainly, uh, they would say, well, someone who's uh, veered off the course. So everybody has their own uh, inside communities, outside communities. Let's say a few things about the Haredi community. They are certainly insular. Of that, there's no question. But I'd like to hear from Mr. Augstein wherein they promote violence, wherein do they teach or preach violence to their own. How many suicide bombers have they uh, generated inside of Israel or outside of Israel? And then the notion of uh, telling uh, people in Germany that, and he talks about all Haredi Jews, to characterize these individuals in this way isn't just an insult, it's dangerous. Uh, the reality today in Europe uh, is that for people who have the Haredi gar, if you will, walking to synagogue can be hazardous for your health. Uh, I've been to Malmo, Sweden. The Wiesenthal Center has a travel advisory on that city. The latest statistics coming out of Sweden in the last two weeks that indicate a couple of hundred incidents of anti-Semitism, no convictions, that the young rabbi, Kesselman, with his little kids, when he walks to and from the synagogue, and Rabbi Kesselman, you can look at him from half a block away, he's a Haredi Jew. He has to deal with serial intimidation and anti-Semitic attacks, and in his case, a mayor who has done nothing but incite the situation, and uh, police authorities who are somewhere from incompetent uh, to simply not caring about the issue. We have uh, situations where religious Jews in France, some of, which, some of whom have been killed. We've had Haredi Jews in the streets in this city who've been attacked. So, even just looking at the contemporary uh, scene, I'm uh, somewhat uh, shocked that Augstein wasn't called out way before this whole thing came about of uh, top ten by fellow German journalists. Where are you? What does this have to do with journalism? And um, one other thing about uh, this attack is this week, uh, and actually for be about a week long, January 27th is designated as International Holocaust Memorial Day. Uh, it is the day that in 1945, uh, the Soviet troops uh, entered Auschwitz. We use the term liberated. It's probably the wrong verb when we talk about liberation. It was too late for millions of, uh, of people. And there have been a number of important memorials, including here at Sachsenhausen, at Auschwitz itself. I'm on my way. Uh, to Asia, <coughs> to uh, uh, a 
unveil our Holocaust exhibit together with the UN uh, in, in Bangkok. But surely it's understood by people here in Germany that a significant percentage of the victims of the Shoah were, by today's standards, Haredi Jews. Beards, payas, what happened to them? They were the first targets on the streets of uh, Germany and uh, Austria, and then of course we know the whole story uh, in Poland, of Haredi Jews being singled out for uh, torture, of religious Jews being wrapped in Torah scrolls and burned alive. Um, the idea, the chutzpah, that a, uh, an individual with uh, free-flowing access to uh, German public uh, opinion would have uh, the audacity to characterize Haredi Jews in this way, using classic medieval Jew hatred, would be given a free pass by his fellow journalists. If he's on the list, put me there too. This is not an attack on journalism, it's not an attack on free speech, and I'm not here to demand a moral blank check for the state of Israel. They don't deserve it. And neither does Mr. Holstein. I'm happy to take your questions on uh, any of the comments that I made. And um, I really want to express again my appreciation uh, to the German media for um, bringing the issues uh, forward in uh, a way in which uh, citizens of uh, this great country uh, can uh, reflect on uh, some difficult, uh, some difficult issues. So I appreciate your attendance, your presence, and Michael, I'll turn it back to you to.